most of the running backs is those guys getting in a bit of a rhythm. You know, he, he's thinking he might cut down the rotation to try and involve, you know, the top two guys a little bit more to help you get in a rhythm. Do you feel like, you know, you get in the rhythm later in the game, like as you get more carries, or how does the rhythm kind of part work for you? Um, so when you got a talented back for this, of course, everybody's going to want the ball and it puts a hard job on our coach because we have a deep room. But uh, I'm, I'm more, I, don't, I wouldn't say a rhythm, but I'm more so say it's like, it's just situations say like, things going to pop sooner or later. Like you're going to get, say if I'm in there for 10 plays and then Chaz get in there and break for 50. It's just, it's just one of them things, like, it's just one of them situations, it's just things happen, like, O-line, kill the D-line that one play, super good, and something just pops for 50. It's just, I think it's more situational than more rhythm, because you got to, and you got to make, you got to, uh, you got to just, what's the word I want to use? You just got to capitalize on your opportunities, so, like, last week, I didn't, I was, I think I was the third person to get the ball, I just capitalized on my opportunity, just like Didi, uh, Darion did on his carry, he got, a, like, two, three carries, but he had like 12 yards on his first carry, he capitalized on the opportunity. So it's just stuff like that. You just capitalize and just situational stuff, stuff happens. For you, you know, uh, specifically, you, you talked about last week, you know, you ended up kind of leading the backfield. If, since Coach Fickle, he said, you might want to rely on one or two guys kind of to take the load or get the hot hand. If that's you, how do you kind of approach that kind of maybe getting a bigger workload? Um, I'm ready for it. I, that's new to me. I didn't, I didn't hear that, but uh, I'm ready for it. Uh, I had a, multiple games with over 20 carries last year. Um, just got to uh, be the same person I am every day, though. I'm best team I can be, uh, be a leader to the young guys, especially. We got young guys in our room that can go, and they just need a leader in front of them that can show them uh, the way. And we are, the older guys are being good leaders in there. Whoever coach lets uh, be that guy this week, gonna have to take it over and just show the young guys uh, the way and pave the way for them, and they'll be able to write behind them. Going off of what Fickle said, um, when it comes to, he said that like maybe the, the amount of backs is part of the reason why you guys haven't been as explosive, you know, have, haven't been able to rip off as many long runs. Are there any other factors or reasons why you guys haven't been as explosive in the run game, you think? No, it's just, uh, well, nah, it's, we really, uh, I think team we've been playing been defending the run, uh, trying to make us pass the ball. Uh, we did a good job of that coming out last week, passing the ball, uh, opened up the run a little bit. Uh, but before that year, everybody's just been defending the run real good. So we've been having four or five yard carries. I mean, four or five yards uh, carry. Um, but now we're, the, we had a great pass game coming out last week hot and that opened up the run game, obviously. So hopefully we just keep on moving like that. How good did it feel to you know, get that 18 yard touchdown? It was one of the longest runs for the entire room of the season, you know, to, to kind of break things through last week. I know the loss, but in the moment, how did that kind of feel? It definitely felt good, especially being back on the West Coast. Uh, but uh, that's something we got to do more of. Uh, it's just, of course, in the moment it felt good, but now thinking about it, it's like, that's that's the standard. And we wouldn't, we weren't, we got to just hold ourselves to that standard and we got to make lines like that every week. So we're just going to build up on that. And we got the first one, now we got to just keep building up. You mentioned that you guys are getting constantly four or five yards a clip. How do you maybe, you know, what's the next step to get some of those explosives? How do you guys maybe, you know, uh, foster that in the entire running back? Um, like I said, uh, the teams we playing kind of been stacking the box, so it's like you have to you have to make three people miss. So it's just like it's some situational things. Like I said, because we had we did have a couple on twos in open field, didn't do a great job winning on, but we didn't have as much as every other team if you watch film, but uh, we just got to start when we get a chance to get to that second and third level, just make people miss and looking at scoring the ball. But you can't always look to score. You got to look, you got to be okay with four or five yard runs and one's going to pop and just like Saturday and pop, but we just got to keep, like I said, keep stacking them up. It's going to come though. As far, I was going to say, as far as, you know, the, the rotation of backs, is it a situation where like, you know, ahead of time, like, okay, Chess is going to be in these two series and then I'm coming in or is it a situation where you know, you guys get the ball and the coach just calls one of the two or three of you guys and you go out. I guess I'm wondering how much do you know when you're going in? Uh, our coach does a great job uh, letting us know the like before the game, like our roles and whatnot. But uh, of course, if somebody has a high hand, they're going to keep going. It, it's not like Tawi gets 10 plays and Chez gets 10 plays and Didi gets two plays. And then also we have the OC, so if the OC likes something that he sees, I'm doing very well. He will tell Coach Cook, keep me in the game. If 
somebody else doing something very well, you're going to tell them to keep you in the game. It's just, we all kind of been, not inconsistent, but nobody's just stood out from the rest of the group. So that really makes a hard job on our coach uh, to rotate everybody in because it's like nobody's really, everybody looks around the same. Somebody has to break out or be that number one guy. And it's just somebody going to have to take it over. Yeah, and I was also kind of curious of like how, how, how a, a running back kind of stays ready when you're not getting the carries. What take me through like, what are you doing from a mental or standpoint, at least on on the sideline, to make sure you're kind of, even though you're not getting the carries or you're not getting the field time at that moment, that you're still kind of engaged. What's take me through that that process? Man, well, nothing's handed to you. So in our running back group, nobody has, like I said, nobody has just exceeded more than anybody else. So nobody should feel the grace to. I should, I should, like, I shouldn't feel the grace to, I need to be in there more than anybody else because I haven't, except for this past Saturday, I haven't stood out. So in my head, it's just when I get in there, I'm gonna capitalize on my opportunity. And that's all I can do. I can't sit there. And I love my teammates. I can't, I want them to succeed just like I succeed. So it's like, I was gonna sit back and just cheer my teammates on, be the best team that I can be, and be ready to capitalize on my opportunity. So when I get in there, I can make coach not take me out the game. So that's all I can think about. Yeah. How um, I know earlier in the year you had the injury, I just wanted to confirm. Are you kind of 100% now? You, you're all good to go? We're we getting there, yeah. yeah. How, how do you kind of maybe go about a week, you know, as you recover, but also stay as focal part of the game plan as you are? Uh, it's just preparing mentally. Uh, that, knowing I wasn't 100%, uh, I have to watch t triple the time as much film as the next person because maybe I'm not, I wasn't up to speed or up to strength like I, I usually am. So I got to just be strategize myself more. Uh, pass pro, run game, just being smarter than the next person and just knowing my every move faster than he knows his every move is just going to help me out. Talking about pass pro, I, I've seen, you know, they, they've kind of thrown in that there a good amount uh, in pass pro. What, how have you kind of developed that skill and what makes it so that, you know, they trust you on a consistent basis in that part? Uh, that I can play fast, um, that I know I can, I know coverages. I'm learning to know coverages with Coach Spall and he's teaching me a lot about coverages. So I can tell what coverage and what blitz they're going to bring. Because I watch pass pros probably not the, it's, it's something that just doesn't come with the game of football. Like some people are blessed to be able to run the ball. Some people are blessed to be able to catch the ball, make moves. But pass pro is something you got to strategize and really watch film. Because my technique wasn't always the best, but I watch so much film and know what's coming that I'm, I'm before he comes, I know I'm getting there. So it's just like makes the, makes the job way much easier. I, I, one of the bigger plays of the, the game last week, the fourth and one. Coach Pickle said, you know, it's about execution. Kind of from a player perspective, what kind of makes it hard for those specific plays when the defense is crashing like that to execute that type of run? Very hard. Uh, if I, it's just, it probably is just very hard. Uh, I think myself, I have to win every time on four for one, uh, especially how I play my game. I'm a powerful back. I have to win those situations. Uh, but it's, we, we got seven to block nine, so it's just like maybe a different situation. Maybe Braden pulls the ball, but it's not his fault. It's, I should have got it. He, I told him he can always put his trust in me, and I didn't get the four and one. So it's just like every everything plays a factor. But we we're, we're getting better. We're gonna work on that, and it won't happen again. Do you have a preference between shotgun or under center taking the ball? Uh, honestly, it's pros and cons to both. Like I feel gun. You can slow the game down more. When you're a pistol, it's like, it's kind of one speed. You just get in there and it's just one speed. So it's pros and cons to a gun. I feel like, just like I said, you can slow the game down. I like to slow the game down a lot. But certain situations, maybe pistol is downhill, but that's like, literally it's one speed, I feel like, because you can't go in pistol, run full speed, get the handoff, and slow down and make a cut like you can a gun. So I think it's pros and cons to it.